In the heathlands of Western Australia, orchids perpetrate an even more complex sexual charade. This time, the victims are a particular group of wasps known as the tinnids. In spring, the female tinnid emerges from the sandy soil where she's been feeding on beetle grubs. She's now ready to mate. If you burrow, it's difficult to develop wings and she has none, so she can't travel far. But the males can, for they feed by hunting and do have wings. They will have to come to her. Once settled, she begins to emit a message of perfume that is detectable for a long distance downwind. Then she waits, and usually not for long. The male carries her away and will mate with her in midair. This, however, is plainly not to our eyes, a wingless female wasp, it's a tiny orchid. But it does carry the signals which indicate female wasp to a male wasp. And not only that, it backs those visual signals with a perfume that is virtually identical chemically to the smell emitted by a female wasp. And the two things between them are quite enough to delude a poor male. Watch. He tries to fly away with her. But how is this helping the orchid? The answer lies in the ingenious mechanical construction of the flower. The purple part is the bogus female. The other half carries a little cup with the pollinia attached to another of those sticky pads. A black head and a furry body is all apparently you need to disguise yourself as a female. This simplified mock-up is attached to the other part of the flower by a delicate but strong hinge. When the male tries to carry off what he assumes is the female, he is thrown upwards by the force of his own exertions towards the cup and the pollinia. But the male's position has to be absolutely correct. In spite of the enthusiasm with which this one is trying to mate, he isn't clinging in exactly the right way. Perhaps this time the orchid will be luckier. Obviously there's little wrong with this orchid's mimicry. Two males are trying to get at it. The pollinia are attached to his back.